Hi, welcome back to another Heather Mac Reacts. Today we're going through some Am I the A-hole stories. And if you like me, you might also like my new channel, Heather Mac Reacts to Reality TV. Episode two will be going live tomorrow. So if you're interested, make sure you subscribe. If you like stories like Am I the A-hole? Make sure you subscribe here. And if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get into this first Am I the A-hole story. I forgot to mention today is viewer submissions. So let's get into your stories. This first one says, mess with me, I will mess with you. And I am here for it. This says, so a couple years ago, I was working in urgent care and I was working at least for 12 hour shifts every week, even though my children were young at the time and I didn't really get to see them because by the time I got home, it was bedtime. And because by the time we woke up in the morning, it was time for me to go to work. So I was the only medical assistant at the urgent care that was able to do EKGs. All the other medical assistants were taught at the urgent care and not taught in school. I got was. So my boss told us it was mandatory to do EKGs because he had gotten a brand new client that was a high paying. Anyways, so my boss asked me to teach the other employees how to do EKGs in case I wasn't there when one came in. So I got with the other MAs and set up a schedule to teach them during work hours so I didn't have to lose time with my children. Well, one of the medical assistants that didn't get along with me said that she couldn't do it during the day and that we needed to do it after hours. I told her no and she got mad and tried to get me pregnant fired maybe? I'm sorry, tried to get me pregnant, I'm guessing fired, said that I was using expired medications on patients and just stuff that she made up. Why would you choose to use expired medications on patients? Like, sure, if it's negligence, that's one thing, but no one is like, oh, let's save these. Like, sorry, it ain't, it ain't my dollar. And the medical f uh, business has tons of money, so I'm gonna toss those old pills and not even think twice about it. So I went out and got myself another job. And then when I put my two weeks notice, the manager said, okay, well, with everyone trained. And I said, no. And I told them what this girl did. And they said, before I left, I needed to make sure that she was trained. So I set up an afternoon to do the EKG a day that I was off. But of course, at the time I had known to watch my children, I had no one to watch my children. So when I came in to teach her how to do EKGs, my children were in the room running around like crazy and she was so mad. I also had my husband, husband there so that we could do an EKG on him. So there was obviously no one to watch the children. It was awesome my last day when the miniature asked if she was trained. I said no because she walked out on me. She was fired the next day because EKGs was mandatory. Wow. Okay, so let me recap. You were trained to do EKGs and none of the other MAs, which means medical assistants in this office were trained to do them. So you were asked to train them to do EKGs. First of all, are you trained to train other people on doing EKGs? Just because you know how to do them does not necessarily mean that you know how to train someone else to do them. I don't know how safe or accurate those, those tests might be. Anyway, moving on from that, you had this one girl who insisted on doing it outside of business hours. You said no. And when she tried to get you fired over bullshit, you said, you know what? I'm gonna just leave on my own. And so you spent your last day there teaching her how to do EKGs at the time that she wanted, you know, she wanted it after hours. So here I am with all of my children. That ma'am was, was, was a malicious compliance mixed with a petty revenge into this delicious little Sunday of retribution. Bravo, OP, bravo. You got your revenge in the easiest way possible by just doing what you were told to do. 
Love it, love it, love it. Thank you for sending in this story. I would like to know what you all think about it in the comments and let's get on to the next one. This says, to help paint the picture, my grandparents took custody of me at birth because my mother was into drugs and the large blue gang. Oh, and she was 14. The next 16 years of my life, she was either staying with us or voluntarily homeless and still doing drugs. Often she would start fights and blame me for ruining her life or threaten to self-exit if I didn't give her money for what she called her bitch medicine, but didn't get physical with us, often just the walls and windows. That is 100% the addiction talking. It is manipulative. It, it doesn't care about your feelings or your relationship or what happens tomorrow. It only cares about what's going on today. And I'm not saying that she has no um, ownership in this, but that wasn't the real her talking is what I'm getting at. My grandma 58 and mother 30 were fighting about something. I just saw mom jump stomping and flailing her arms around while grandma backed away flinching so I ran between them just in case. Mother starts screaming at me. You make everything worse. Stay out of it. Just let me talk. I look at her quietly then ask are you done now because I'm not letting you near grandma till you calm down and before I finish talking she starts to push past me closer to grandma. Oh no 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 you best to stay the fuck away from grandma my friend. I only remember trying my hardest to stop her and then later hearing my grandma beg for me to stop. After everything she told me the damage I did. Grabbed her wrists dropped both of us on the ground, then pinned and choked her till grandma got through to me. Mother had scratches, bruises, and I grabbed her wrist so hard, my nails pierced the skin, making her bleed pretty bad, like dripping bad. But at the end of the day, just because someone is older than you doesn't mean they get to abuse people older than them and show respect to the respectful. Wow. It's, it's really unfair that your mother put you in such a situation that you didn't even realize the fact that you had dug your fingernails into her wrists. You were just so scared and so tense and so anxious and so worried about your grandma that you just latched onto your mother's arms and made sure she couldn't swing them anymore. I'm so sorry that you've been put in the middle of this, but I mean, it was right of you to get between the 30 year old and the 58 year old for sure. It was, it was, it was, it was a good idea for you to get between them. It wasn't a good idea for you to do any of the action, like, like the, like the choking. I understand that you might not have been cognizant for that part, but that's where all your mother's wrongdoings now get shoved onto you even though you were trying to do the right thing. This is how people trying to do the right thing get the wrong consequence. So I would hope in the future that you could just stand there quietly for longer and just like hold out your arms and just like maybe just like walk just like just like you know, not like pushing her, but just like hurting her like out the door, you know, just like this, just, and if she starts hitting you, you can go like this and just hurt her out the door and call the cops, man. Don't, don't let yourself be dragged down to her level because her level, as you know, is just about as low as you can get. And you don't need a record because of her and her bullshit. That would be a supreme waste of your good name. At the end, it says, I can say hi to you. So this story was from Miles. Hi, Miles. I'm so sorry this is going on. I hope that things get better. And I hope that you and your grandma are able to go no contact with your mom until she is a safe and reasonable person to be around. 
Thank you for sending this story to us. I would like you all to let Miles know what you think about this story in the comments and let's get on to the next one. This says, sorry if this story is a little spotty. I could write a book of all the crappy stories my siblings and I have. I'm currently 29 female. I'm the oldest of six kids from four men. My mom wasn't one to settle down or try to provide structure for us. See, so she searched for a daddy for us and someone to take care of her. Her narcissism made her feel like the best single mom ever while it was ruining relationships and while she was dumping a lot of the child care onto me her high school age daughter at the time oh parentification here we go my mom was a major alcoholic up until about two years ago she would stay out late more nights than not leaving me to watch my siblings she'd stay out so late and be so hungover she'd sleep until she had to go to work i'd be in charge of dinner homework putting everyone to bed and then getting everyone up and off to school before going to school myself only to leave school early to walk across town to the elementary school to pick up my siblings and do it all over again this is just so not fair. I just, that's a lot of work for a grown parent to do, let alone a child. And I'm sorry if you're still in high school, you are still a child in a lot of ways. She did stop drinking. However, she switched from one addiction to another and became addicted to psychedelics instead. She seemed to collect broken people and has always put them above her kids. During COVID in 2020, way too many people were in and out of a three bedroom home that really became a party house. One of these partying nights, I was essayed and that night I told my mom what happened. Less than two months later, after whispering in my ear, he will get his karma while also letting him continue to stay in the home. She then moved a couple towns away into a house with this man. While she was away, I moved out of state from August 2020 to October 2021. I just tell you how close to tears I am. I'm so fucking sorry that the one person in your life who was supposed to take care of you and protect you did neither of those fucking things. Like, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I will, I, I, and, and I think I know who this is and I think you already have a kid, if I'm remembering correctly. This is the wrong email thread. If it's you, please understand that I remember you, but I don't remember if this was the other email you sent anyway. What I'm getting at is if you're a mom, I hope you understand that like, that's not the truth, the light or the way. A good mom like me, yes, I will say that I'm a good mom. A good mom like me literally knows the weight of having children and the, and the weight and the responsibility that is on my shoulders to not only love these children, to protect these children, to teach these children how to be functioning and members of society and just good people. That's a lot, but like, I take it very, very serious. It is my job to be the soft spot for those two boys. It is my job to, you know, hug them when they cry and then turn around and tell them what they did wrong to make themselves cry. That's all on me. And I'm, I'm so sorry that you didn't get that growing up. Since moving back, I've tried very hard to forgive my mom for all the trauma she caused in my life and try to build a regular relationship with her again, but I couldn't get over the past. I don't think you'll ever have a regular relationship with her because she's not a regular person. You're trying to... Okay, okay so I, th I think the word is personification, right? You... Uh, have a car and you name her Betsy and you, you know, talk sweet nothings to her when she's chugging her way towards the gas station on the last eighth of a tank that you had left that you waited too long to fill up, okay? That's personifying that car. It's almost like you're personifying your mom into a mom that is a good mom. You're like in your brain, like cosplaying her as a good mom. She's not a good mom, she's not a good person. She has a proven track record of doing bad things and letting bad things happen to you. And I understand she's your mother and you only get one, but you don't have to come back and come back and come back for more abuse. 
just because she's your mom. She doesn't have that kind of power over you or your life. She really doesn't. She has been since she stopped drinking, trying to show how different she is now, that she's not the same person she was. While some things have changed, the narcissism and toxic mental men mentality she has has not changed like I figured it wouldn't you you a tiger can't change its stripes okay it's down to the skin down to the bone I found out I was pregnant in June of 2023 I also found out I was pregnant in June of 2023 I wanted to put our past behind us so my son could have his grandma in his life. You don't want that kind of grandma in his life. At my baby shower in October, 2023, she told me she would be in touch with me closer to when my baby would be born to get me anything else I might need for him. My son came early. He was due February 1st, 2024. He came December 30th, 2023. Whoa, I still have a 2024 baby. He came early 2024. She came to see us at the hospital, again, reminding me if I needed anything to be in touch. Every time we spoke for the first three months of my baby's life, I initiated the conversations. She never asked me how we were or if we needed anything, never asked if she could come over to help me out around the house or anything. My mom literally flew her and my younger sister down here for like four or five days just to help me like she didn't come too soon after the birth because she wanted to give us some time to kind of like just be a family she came down like a month later and like set my whole my whole life like back right side up late march i sent her a long message detailing why i would be cutting her off i blocked her on everything after she gave me the excuse of i don't want to live in the past yeah, because it's a dirty, dirty past for you, isn't it, bitch? While I was trying to vocalize my traumas and have her own her accountability, I never got an apology, just deflection, and made to feel bad for holding on to what hurt me in the past. What would have made you let go of it? A caring mother who loved you through it? Didn't get that, no, did you? Did you even get any therapy? Like any at all? H have you talked to any professional about this? So am I the evil for cutting off my mom? Girl. I will say it was the hardest thing I have ever done. I hear she's finally healing, but at almost 30, while well, she is 50 years old and just figuring shit out, it feels like it's little too, it's too little too late for her to fix things with me. I agree. I mean, I just like, you, you can't fix narcissism. It just is who you is. <laughs> and 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 you can't make her want to be a better mom sure she says she's healing but do you really believe that or do you believe that she's manipulated the messenger into believing she was healing so they would tell you stand your ground she has brought nothing to your life but heartache trauma i can't think of the next word but isn't that enough please you are not the a-hole. Thank you for sending in this story. I would like to know what everyone else thinks about this one in the comments and let's move on to the next one. This says, I'm writing in need of some advice regarding my mom. Here's some backstory. My mother is a 65 year old woman with some health issues. She is sweet, but she drinks a lot and is lonely. She lives in a nice apartment complex for people 55 plus though. So she has been making friends. Recently, Recently, she started getting these blisters inside of her mouth. After a week, my sister brought her to the ER and they gave her an antibiotic rinse to keep the sores from getting infected. They would start to go away and then come raging back. My first thoughts were hand, foot, and mouth, oral herpes, canker sores, but none of those came back positive. One day, her tongue was so swollen she was drooling and couldn't talk properly. Yikes. Last night, my sister called me because my mom has been spending time with this woman in the building. This woman is not well. She is paranoid and has delusions that her TV, phone, and lights are tapped. 
She thinks that people are breaking in, into her apartment while she walks her dogs and messing with her food. She asked my mom to sit in her apartment while she walks her dogs or goes to doctor's appointment. My mom agreed to this for some reason. Last night, my sister called me to tell me that my mom has been eating food from this woman. She brings it to my mom's apartment and drops it off. My sister looked up symptoms of poisoning and she matches a lot of the signs. We got some Corey Richens nonsense up in here. Oh my goodness. I guess she bought my sister and her youngest son some really nice gifts. It seems like she is attaching herself to my mom and sister as quickly as she can. I'm very worried. My mom gets scammed a lot and hangs out with seedy people due to her situation, her drinking and loneliness. I don't want to see her hurt or worse. What can I do? I feel like this woman could have started to suspect or blame my mom for things that went wrong or were perceived off when she returned from her walks or doctor's appointment. I've talked to my mom and my sister and they both agree it's suspicious. I hope my mom takes it seriously. What things should we test for? Yikes. Thanks for reading. Would love any advice you have. Appreciate you and your channel. Oh, you're so sweet. Um, go to the emergency room. They can run her blood. They can test for heavy metals. They can test for uh freaking shit that ain't supposed to be in there. They might they might be able to test her stomach sample. Um, if you have any food from that woman, or if you want to wait and bide your time and wait for her to drop off some more food, you could take that food somewhere to the fucking police station to be evaluated and then you'd have some uh pretty firm fucking evidence please do not go into her apartment anymore she literally could put like poison like on the seat she tells you to sit on she, she could put like liquid fentanyl where where your hands go on the seat to to stand yourself up or sit yourself down and like you're dead in five minutes Please, this woman sounds fucking insane. Stay away from her. If she wants to drop off food, tell her you've got the vid and to leave it outside, okay? Get the food, bring it in, take it to the police station, start filing a police report, save yourselves. <laughs> Thank you for writing into me. I am genuinely concerned. Please keep me updated in my emails. If you want me to update um, everybody, I can do that too. But if you just want to update me, please do. I would like to know what you all think about that one in the comments. Don't forget, we have a playlist of over 350 Ham I the whole videos up here. I'm also going to tag our viewer submission playlist up here. Please don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!